Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and we are out here today at the Equip Expo in Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm going to walk this show and show you some of the coolest equipment, like this bad boy. And anything I find interesting, we'll throw it in here. I'm also going to do some standalone videos. I think this Altaz switch is so cool that it's going to get its own video. There's also a ton of other YouTube channels that I'm friends with here, and we're gonna tag along with them, get some of their thoughts too. I think it'll be a lot of fun. All right, so I ran into my friends Brad and Lucas from Piney Grove and Peaks Peak Hobby Homestead. All right, we got a mini skid steer here. I think these things are wild. Have you ever used one? I have never used one. You'd like to. You're gonna have to go outside. They're gonna, they've got a lot of opportunities to run them. I'll do that. But this has a lifting capacity probably more than your tractor. Oh, I'm sure. Weighs probably about the same amount, but a tiny footprint and you're not, you're just standing there on the back. This would be awesome. I'd like to take this home and build some jumps on our dirt bike track. <laughs> I'm absolutely, I love the idea of a mini skid steer compared to a compact tractor. And I've only ran them at the shows where you've got a pile of loose dirt and you can move it here to there. I'll tell you what this would be great for. It's already got the grapple on it is setting logs on the mill. Absolutely. Yeah. And one thing that's really interesting is where it's almost like with tractors, especially hydrostat, if you've driven one, you've driven them all. It's not that way with these. They all have different control systems. Oh, really? So when you're picking a machine, I would almost base it on the control system because some of them aren't comfortable. Yeah. So is, is one of these steer and drive and one is bucket? I bet it is, and I'm 100%, I think, I think this is the best. There are some that have two handles for your steering. Yeah. And I've ran those and I didn't care for it. Well, yeah, it would tie up your hands for the other options too. I'm not sure how that would work. You have to go out and try it. Um, yeah. Toro Dingo is one that I didn't wasn't crazy about, but never seen a New Holland before. All right, we're still here at New Holland Construction. And I didn't notice this machine. I thought, there it is, another small excavator. But someone said this is electric. You were just asking them about it. Is this a fully electric machine? It is, it's a fully electric machine. And that's why I was asking the representative about it because having an excavator myself and you've rented one before, they, um, you know, they're noisy and they have the emissions and all that. And just the fact that you can get a powerful machine like this and it's electric, I just thought was fascinating. So. I did an interview and talked to the guy about it, and um, but the, the biggest drawback was the price point. This machine right here, and it, it's it's a fabulous machine. It's nice and small. It's got the expandable tracks. It's got the front dozer blade, but it was 70K for this machine. And I don't know exactly what the lift capacity is, and so you'd really have to have a specific need for that. That's the penalty you pay. Yep. You overpay if you're buying the first, first wave of right. a product, like an electric excavator. Very cool that they're getting there, but I don't know if it's for me, but pretty cool. Well, one thing that I really liked that he had to say was that the runtime on it was about eight hours. So you figure when, when I'm using my mini excavator, I, I rarely use it for eight hours straight. So that's always been the drawback of electric is you can't do it. Like with the solar track tractor, you can only go about four hours brush hogging. It sounds like you can get a full day of work in with this. So that might be the trade off, especially if you're working indoors. Yep. So if you guys want more information about this machine, he got a sales rep from the company on there. You can check out Brad's video at Piney Grove. All right, just ran into a couple friends that I see every year at this show. This is, uh, who are you? Tony. <laughs> Tony's Tractor Adventure, you've seen him on my channel. And this is a viewer. I'm Ed. Love coming to these shows for the equipment, but also just talking to people. Yep. So if you ever see us out, say hi. You see Ed out here, say hi too. He's here every year. <laughs> yep. Every year. Okay, so I'm walking through the show and I see Dewalt log splitters. Didn't know that existed, so I've got to find out a little bit about it. So you want to tell me first the company you're with and, and the other types of products that you guys make? Yeah, we're YTL International. We're the largest manufacturer of log splitters in North America, Canada. We do some business in Europe as well. Um, we have products in Lowe's and the Craftsman brand. Uh, tractor supply under the county line brand and DeWalt is new for us this year so we have a full line we have a 28 ton a 32 ton and a 38 ton um, those have already launched we have them in our warehouse where we actually just had a really great show with their dealer group um, in San Antonio we had a really strong feedback from them um, and then this we're really excited about this is our 35 ton log lift splitter it kind of takes some of those pro features and brings it down to a more attainable kind of 
semi-pro consumer level. So we're targeting a uh, $3,699 price tag on this. Usually you don't get this log lift feature until you get into the five, $8,000 mark. So really this is an appealing item for a lot of people, uh, both commercial, semi-pro, and um, some of your residential users that just want to save their back. Because the nice thing about this, a lot of people will put logs on here and just lift it up and kind of assembly line it off. So, and guys that are doing this where they're actually cutting, they're doing boards of wood for sale. They'll get two, three guys operating this machine. Okay, so this is kind of the premium model of the three DeWalt log splitters you guys currently have out. Correct, yeah, and you can see this, we have our 28s on back here. We don't have the 32 or the 38 here, um, but most of the market here, like the volume is gonna be in this unit, but this is a really nice premium unit to round out the top. And then we'll get a shot of this in a minute. Yeah. You actually have a little electric splitter. You wanna tell me about the idea behind that and the capability of it? Well, I think if you walk around the show, I mean, you're gonna see everything. There's a little bit of battery coming out everywhere. everywhere. Um, and again, with California regulation, we don't want to be left behind. We don't be Kodak. So again, we don't think it's gonna replace our gas biz, but it's a nice compliment. And it comes with some benefits. So it's the same hydraulic, same pump, you get the same power, but it's push button start, less maintenance. You don't have to deal with an engine. You know it's gonna start when you go out to, to work on it. So you don't have, it takes away some of those headaches. Plus a lot of people split in the winter. So if you're in a garage or a barn, you can operate in there and not suffocate. So that nice little uh, feature add. Fantastic. So you're saying that's going to have as much splitting power as a traditional homeowner log? Yeah. So that's a, that's a nine ton. So it's a smaller unit. Um, that's going to get about an hour of runtime off of one of their 12 amp hour flex bolt batteries. Uh, we are also planning to do a 20 ton unit uh, for them as well. So um, again, you get as much power as you go up in tonnage. Um, but yeah, it's the same hydraulic system, same pumps that you're using in your current model. And yeah, you'll get the same power. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking time to tell me about it. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay, so I've got Mike here from Ironcraft, and I've got a couple of their products, been really happy with the quality on it. And he's been telling me about a product that I thought you guys might find interesting. So behind me is a Harley rake, a lot like the one that I have. And you were telling me you've got some other variations on the Harley rake. Yes, sir. So, uh, you know, we've, we've got uh, a four-in-one bucket, right? Everybody's aware of four-in-one bucket, clamshell, it'll open. And then we've got this Harley rake, which is on the other end of the spectrum. And you wouldn't think those two products would go together. But what we did is we brought those two products together. So we've got a four-in-one power rake is what we call it. We just won an award on it. We're very excited about it. And so I think you were kind of saying, why, why did you guys make this? And it's not easy to see until you show somebody. But when you show up at a job site, with one of these uh, Harley rakes. It's a big attachment. It weighs a lot. It's gotta go on a trailer, go to the job site. You gotta hook it up, unhook it. Well, with our four-in-one power rake, it's all in one. You've got the ability to go up and clean up a job really quick, get around the edges, use the power rake portion to uh, you know, braid the material and spread it out and get the rocks and the clumps out of it. When you get done with the power rake at the end, there's always a pile of rocks or a pile of debris. With that four in one part, you just grab that debris and you can take it off. You didn't have to disconnect. You didn't have to bring an extra attachment. It was all in one and you're off the job site in one quick moment. So I've got the opportunity to use a four in one bucket a couple times and I think it's very underrated. I really think it's fantastic not having to change attachments because to go to the point you just made, what I've found is when I find a job I need to do that's not on my property, it's one thing to understand I have the equipment and I know how to do the work but I have limited real estate within, on, within a trailer to say, I need this and this and this to get the job done. Okay, I'll take three trips to the job. Nobody wants to do that, whether it's bringing material and the machine back with me or whatever the case is, anytime you can save that room. And you guys Critical. actually won an award for that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah we got the equipment today, top 50 products, so we're very proud of that. It's and a there's about 2,000 products here, so uh, pretty cool to get that. Yeah. Now, in terms of Ironcraft in general, I've told this story a couple times already, but you guys used to be Titan attachments, right? Titan implements. Implements, which is very different than Titan attachments, which is an important distinction. But what I like about Ironcraft is you guys make just about everything from a tractor to a skid steer to these Inside. back here are mini skid steer attachments.
there's only a handful of attachments that we don't make. And that's usually where I start with people. We have over 500 different products that we offer from the ag side, the construction side, the mini skid. Uh, we're getting into the mini excavator. We're just expanding every day to make sure we've got that full product for the customer. And to generalize, most likely the viewer, wherever you bought your tractor, can probably get Ironcraft attachments. Is that's that right. accurate? Yeah, we've got over 600 dealers out there uh, selling our products from the East Coast to the West Coast. So what I find with dealers is sometimes even the salesman at the dealership doesn't know that they can access different brands. They always sell one brand to whoever comes in. And I've said, hey, can you get this? And they said, well, I don't know. And they look, oh, yes, yeah, we, we are it. an Ironcraft dealer. So you can don't be afraid to go in your dealership and ask for other brands. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you taking time to talk to me. Thanks, Brock. Appreciate it. All right, so I'm at the Kubota booth now, and I've got Jacob here, and I asked him, you know, what do you guys have here at the show that's maybe new or people haven't seen before from Kubota? And he's highlighted this machine behind me. So you want to tell us a little bit about this? Yeah, I would love to. So this is our brand new RTV X1130, and the concept of this vehicle is taking our beloved diesel series, X series in fact, and creating a one row long bed configuration. So what's different about it is it's got a six foot long cargo bed. It's got 1,213 pounds of cargo capacity, which is the most of any of our X series. It's got a hydraulic dump bed um, and a VHTX transmission, which makes it a favorite for anybody looking to get work done around their property, their work site and everything in between. Fantastic. So you just said the number, but what was the capacity on that dump bed? It's 1,213 pounds. The other benefit though to our bed is that it's made of steel a liner comes standard, and we've got our hydraulic dump as well. So not only can you dump material much more quickly than a over hydraulic dump bed, uh, for example, but you can also control the speed of dumping if you need to dump more precisely. So I don't think anyone's questioning the quality of a Kubota side-by-side. -side. They've been popular and they're gonna continue to be, but the most unique things about this is that it's got that bigger bed on it. And then what's the model number on it? It's the RTV X1130. And I would say at the highest level, some things that set us apart, like you mentioned, the quality, the durability, that's a given. But having a diesel engine, common fuel source, right? Um, a little bit more of a durable engine typically. But then that VHTX transmission, ease of operation, one pedal uh, operation primarily. You got the dynamic braking, you got some of the hill hold assist. But what makes this model extremely unique is that long bed configuration. And not only that, but we also have a pro convert feature, which means you can open it from either side. You can open it from the tailgate and you can fold all the sides down or without tools, you can convert it to a flat bed. Okay, so you said that this bed, the way it's set up and the way it unfolds is a little bit unique. If you could show us that. Yeah, absolutely. And we call this our pro convert feature, which again, allows you to fold it down from either side. I'll show you here. You basically leverage this latch. If you come over to this latch, and once those are down, you're able to fold it. Not only that, it folds all the way down. Now you can do it on this side, you can do that with the tailgate, you can do it on the other side, number one. Number two, um, without having to use tools, you can take the sides and the tailgate off completely, and then you've got a flat bed. So I immediately see an advantage to this fold down. If nothing else, if you go get firewood rounds and you wanna split them, this is about the same height as my splitter, I could pull right next to it and work out of it without having to lift over. Right, and, and the other thing that's a benefit too is the loading height is about four inches lower than the other competitor that has a long bed configuration. So when you imagine yourself loading material in or unloading it, having that low loading height makes it easier for all types of customers to load and unload. The other thing that's worth mentioning is you'll see these integrated pockets so you can slide a two by six in if this is up and separate out the cargo, uh, the cargo bed, but it also allows you to extend the height of the sides and the tailgate for hay bales and things of that nature. Yep, and that, that probably kind of opens you up to other aftermarket accessories, even simple things. I have, you know, chain hook things that are specifically designed for a stake pocket. So that's definitely a good feature. It was glossed over you saying at the beginning of the diesel engine, because a lot of your less expensive side-by-sides are pretty limited on power. So having that diesel engine sounds like a major plus. Yeah, and so typically, what is the, I mean, this is a work machine. It's not like a race 
machined or something. Correct. But do you know what like a speed range is on this? Yeah, so this is this max speed is about 27 miles an hour. And when you look at that versus some of the other competition, what their top speed is, a lot of people say, well, that's not fast enough. But when you really think about how you're using the machine, you're starting and stopping frequently, you're using it to do work again around your property, uh, a municipality, a work site, and people aren't going over 27 all that often. No, so my tractor, I don't need, my property's so bumpy, I don't put it in high very often. So right. yeah, it's definitely not a high speed machine, but looks really sweet. And I appreciate you taking time to show it to me. Absolutely, I appreciate the time as well. If I'm being honest, I probably didn't even do justice to this Kubota side-by-side. -side. I got another 15 minutes talking to the sales rep after I turned the camera off and man, top of the line. They've got not just the winch for the front, but they've got an integrated winch system on the back and lights and you know add-on features that you can put on it. Phenomenal. Probably worth checking out the Kubota site and see what kind of information they've got on it. Okay, so I just found a product that solves a real problem that I have. And as I talked to the owner of the company, we found some pretty cool information is that he's from Southeast Kansas, where I'm from. And I always enjoy talking to and, and showcasing products from small businesses like yourself. Yep. So the problem that we're solving here today is that my viewers know I've got a ton of equipment. And I was frustrated the other day saying, I still don't have a good way to lift my mower up. What I had done in the past on one of my most popular videos is I lifted the front of the mower with tractor hydraulics and then crawled under it. And I was, uh, the comments on that were not very kind because that's honestly, not safe. It's not too better than that. Yep, I get it, it. And they're right. And I actually had stuck a concrete block under the deck, which yeah. is not the greatest option. And then since then, I've gotten a new bigger mower, the Hustler X1. And I was trying to lift it just the other day with a floor jack floor jack wouldn't go under it. And then when I found a way to get it under it, it couldn't lift high enough. No. So I've been driving my mower up with one wheel on the side of the mower ramp and the other wheel just dangling out in the air, which isn't very safe either. So I've been looking for a product like you have. So I'll let you tell the rest of the story. Well, I mean, great opportunity for you to be at the Outdoor Power and Equipment Show and see the whole world out there and stuff. And God bless you for dealing with Canvas companies and oh, keeping us going. So our product, we found in 2007, a couple small farmers had made this to be a product that would be easy to change lawnmower blades and for it to be safe. So let me show you a little bit about that. So this particular product is the Mojax EZ model. This kind of consumer product, this particular product is sold at Lowe's. Other ones are also sold at Track Supply and Home Depot, but they all work basically the same way. They're designed to adjust out to the size of your lawnmower. So this will handle any track style mower, any small ZTR mower up to about 60 inch deck. You just drive it on and easily wind it up. Now, how do I let that down safely? Same way, you just do this. There's a safety point here, it locks in three different places. In case there was some failure, it would be protected again. But you just simply lower it down like this. The great thing about it is, is it's safe. So you get up underneath the mower, you've got all this junk and stuff. You've got to use a wrench or an air impact gun to take that blade off. But you need to be safe because you don't want to shake that mower off your block or whatever you've got. This is solid and safe. You can get up underneath it about two and a half, three feet, put an air impact gun up underneath it. It's safe, easy to use, and then lower it back down. Okay, and you said this one can handle about 450 pounds, but that's not the weight of the mower. That's no. the amount of weight that's on the jack itself. Yeah, so this is 450, 500 pounds of front end weight. So a ZTR mower, there's not much front end weight, a little bit with tracker, but it's completely safe to use that. And then you've got a bigger version, like I have a one, I have a large commercial mower, yep. and you have a bigger version that's very similar that's gonna handle that bigger mower. Absolutely, I'd be happy to show you that model as well. Okay, and generalized price point, is this something that's gonna be affordable for a homeowner? Yeah, this is $300 roughly at retail. You can find us at themojack.com, or you can go to Lowe's, Home Depot, Track Supply, get it in that kind of 300, 350 range. Yep. All right, let's take a look at the other model real quick. All right, so this does look a little beefier. So this is for your bigger mowers. This is designed specifically for the biggest CTR market it was, it was uh, mowers out there. I know you have a Hustler S 
or X1. The X1, that's a 72 inch deck. Yep. With this, I know we've used all the way up to the 85, 86 inch decks, but same kind of concept. This will fit any size mower, that size or smaller. You just drive it on. Same scenario, crank it up. It's super easy. The other thing is, every step of the way, this locks in place for safety. So, once it's up, it's solid, it's safe. Put another, get another air impact wrench, clean out underneath the deck. Easy to use, it's safe, it's solid. Awesome. Looks like a great product. Yeah. I appreciate you taking time to show it to me. Absolutely. Good luck cleaning out the deck, Brock. Okay, so we're over here at the TYM booth. I've run into another YouTube channel who watches me, apparently. I've already apologized for that. <laughs> but uh, you want to tell them real quick what yeah. your channel is and what you guys do? Okay, uh, my name's John Kabbalah. I run the YouTube channel, The Turf Junkies, small YouTube channel. Um, I'm a full-time firefighter. Uh, several of my guys that work with me, they're firefighters too. We do our jobs basically on our off days. Um, I've got one law enforcement guy that helps out too. And we just, re I record the jobs and kind of do more of a how-to of how to do it and, you know, let people see different ways to do things. And uh, we do a lot of stuff from cutting grass all the way to tree work and pressure washing. And I uh, try to get a little bit more of a funnier commentary because I've got, you know, guys that I've worked with in the fire service for many years. And they, uh, we, we throw, you know, some hashtags at each other. And he, bash each other while we're working so and you said as from an equipment perspective you use a john deere tractor yes we we have two uh 30 38 uh 790 and a 750 and i'm hoping to get um like the one series like 125 r so i'm really curious why 30 38 um for me uh in the business aspect of uh, the stuff i do it was a small enough machine that was capable of doing some stuff uh, at the time, I was the most affordable uh, option I could. And when I bought the 3038E, I got the uh, backhoe with it and the uh, graphic because I wanted to get as much for my money and value as I could. And I've been a big John Deere fan most of my time. Yeah, so his tractor is the same horsepower as mine, but it's going to have bigger tires and actually cost less. So that's been one I've been... I think it'd be nice to get a head-to-head -head comparison with. I've done several of the 3 Series, but not a 3038. Yeah. But anyway, check out the Turf Junkies. It was nice meeting you. Oh, yeah. Thanks, guys. Here we've got the Tweels from Michelin. And I had those on a Zero Turn before. It was actually on my John Deere mowers. Phenomenal. Never goes flat. And I'd like to get these on my Hustler. All right, so this has been a fantastic show. Had so much fun. I've got more videos coming about the show. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.